Hi everyone, this is Dr. Erdogan from Smile Hair Clinic. Today I would like to uh, explain a, a case study of our clinic and my patient. Uh, I will show you some photos and uh, try to clarify and explain what we've done, what we have done to the patient and how is the result. So let's start. Our patient is 32 years old and he has a problem since uh, he is 24 years old. So for seven or eight years, he has a hair loss problem. He just used minoxidil before coming us, but there is no other treatment options uh, he tried. So once he came to the clinic, we of course did his evaluation and we, uh, we planned and in the end, we uh, completed the surgery with 5,100 grafts in total. So let's check the, the photos of the patient. Okay, I'm starting with the photos that taken in the studio. These are the first photos that we take uh, by professional cameras, uh, but then we have other photos in the operation room as well. So pretty, pretty much uh, his, his first priority was actually when I was talking with the patient was the temporal areas. His front seems good, but it's a typical undergenetical male pattern baldness. Uh, more severity in the crown area, but still he preserved the frontal part, but he lost hairs from the bald temporal part. Temporal frontal, uh, there is a, sometimes there is a bridging, uh, we don't see with this patient, so it's intact, but crown is much worse than it is. This is from the side. He, he preserved the triangle, the temporal point design, but his, his temporal part is just receded back. This part is as well. In, in further progress of the patients with the Norwood scale, we always see these temporal parts to be lowered. It's not completed with, but it's, uh, he's a candidate for having this in the future if he cannot uh, go medical treatment afterwards. And this is, I think I need to explain this a little bit to the patients. Donor area is always considered, maybe you are reading this in the internet as well. There is a safe donor area explanation, but safe donor area doesn't mean that we need to work just on that area and we shouldn't work on the other areas. Safe donor area means that it is testosterone resistant and probably these hairs will remain on your head if you transfer them to the recipient site. If we just stuck on the safe donor area and if we just take the grafts from there, probably we will take 1,000 to 2,000 grafts in total. And it doesn't give us the right thing about the result in the future for covering other areas. It doesn't give right density, it doesn't give the full coverage. We should take some other grafts from upper part of the safe donor area and lower part of the safe donor area. The crown area, when it's receded from this part till down part, down, downwards, uh, until it stops in some point uh, with the donor area, it, it has some lack of density, low density appearance. That is a critical point for us to stop or not to harvest from over that area. Patient can still make a recovery of this area with finasteride and minoxidil, but he should give a try for that. But we do not want to do any transplantation or we do not want to do any extraction to that area. That's a crown area, a large crown area, nearly 140 centimeters square, which means he needs a lot. Okay, so this is the photo that we do the preparation and the planning. Uh, we decide with the patients about the line together. We usually decide according to their proportions of their face. One third, one third and one third, which is the golden ratio. But I believe it's sometimes not very suitable with some patients because it doesn't fit for some patients and sometimes we don't have enough graph to cover other areas. So we need to uh, decide the higher hairline if possible. Mostly I'm telling this or I'm recommending these to the patients, but sometimes patients are willing to lower the line, which is acceptable, but they need to understand that we are extending the hairline, we are extending to respin side, we are enlarging the respin side, and it's hard to fill in, even now or even in the future, even he needs less graft. I think it was ideal with him. Uh, we were agreed together. By the way, it's not only my recommendation or patient's request. We need to talk interactively to decide together. Okay, this is donor area again. You've seen just in the raw photos. Sometimes patients think that uh, these lines are too straight because we don't look three dimension. We can't see how it is going or how the curve is uh, uh, curve ends in the temporal part. Actually, it's not too straight and 
this is a line guide for us. We don't we don't stay just on the line. Uh, we do some irregularities, different irregularities, irregular irregularities to give more naturalness to the hairline. Uh, you see it now much better that it is more roundy. Uh, but this is just a line, of course. Patients hard to imagine that I know, but it's hard. So this is the frontal part. So we divide the recipient area to th three different parts. This is the frontal part, including the hairline, temple parts. This is the mid scalp, and this is the crown area. Uh, you've seen in the longer photos that he has some hairs in the frontal mid, mid middle of the center of the mid, uh, frontal part. Uh, our main focus is the goal is to do the temporal parts. Sometimes patients ask these guides why we do that. It's just to give us guide and frame. We don't do anything to there. It's this is my style, by the way. Some of the surgeons also do the same thing. This is just for our guidance. Okay, let's check about what we did to him. Incisions. I know it doesn't look very nice, uh, but. We try to do, we try to fill the both temple parts. We try to uh, concentrate on his crown area. And here he had hair, we know, I know. Uh, of course, you can't see in very detail that without become, because of the incisions, uh, you can't see the existing hair, but our purpose is to, to protect all the hairs that is in, the, in that area. Otherwise, we need other thousands of crafts to cover everything. But, uh, sometimes people or patients or other people criticize this that we do in the hair area. No, of course we, we, we shouldn't do and we don't do. But we are using magnifiers during the operation and we are scalp balloning to, to separate the hairs. And between those hairs we need to give some more hair implantation so it gives more improvement to the hair. Because if the patient loses those hairs as well, uh, he will be unsatisfied in the end and we need to take care of that. Wherever we see some gaps, we just do that. Okay, let's check first mount. This is the, one of the first bad appeared times, I think. Uh, patient is similar to his condition before, just with some redness and just some hairs are growing. Uh, and hair is short, of course, but pretty similar to his previous condition except some hairs growing and some redness. Donor area is unfortunately, uh, some patients are very sensitive. This shows some redness. That is the reason. Crown, nothing. Okay, let's check six month photos. Ah, he changed. <laughs> he changed already. He's a different guy from now on. Front, even this is a satisfying result for a patient, I think, or even for me, if he shows me this thing and he says I'm satisfied, I will say I, 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 I'm also satisfied. With some patients we go, for example, this patient has not so thick hair, he has a huge area to cover, we, we split some hairs in the front, some hairs in the crown. Uh, so even this was okay for me, but of course, uh, sometimes we see very good results. Uh, six months, I think he, it was good with even the patient. Look how natural is the line. I think it's it's good. Donor area already healed, nothing. Very good. Crown more than more than expected. I know I have to say that too. Because crown success are very, very bad, very insufficient because of the circulation, because of we don't want to implant too many grafts to that area too. That's another reason as well. Lastly, his end result. Okay, he's a different guy. <laughs> he's a total different guy. Look how natural the hair is in the front. Because we already used his, his heavy hairs as well. Perfect. Very nice. Very natural. No one can say that he had the transplantation. That's the most important result, I think. It's not very straight, you see. It's not very straight in the front or the line is not too straight. It has a tilt, it shows up, it, it's something like he, he has a natural hair that is receded some. And this smooth transition in the temporal, frontal temporal part, I think it looks good too. And in order to be honest, I was expecting a little thinner result with him, but somehow it adapts, it has more better growing. Uh, he, I think he has not used any medication after the operation even. And this is the crown. 
Still, some areas are not very okay, but I was not expecting this too. It, this is a very nice result of Crown for me. His donor seems very good. And patient is super happy. That is the important thing, I think. So, uh, this was my full explanation of my case uh, we did last year. So, if you have some questions, if you have some uh, things that you didn't understand, please comment below the video or send us email and we will try to explain and we will try to get solution for you. Thank you so much for watching out.